What's happening guys? Okay, so welcome back to another video I haven't uploaded in ages and today we're going to be chatting with Johan the Rugby Guru once again. Um, I, well, basically a lot of you know who Johan is anyway, he's always on the channel uh, and I've obviously been doing some live streams with him. So uh, yeah, how are you Johan? I'm good, thanks Andrew, you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, so basically today's video we're going to be talking about the Pro 16, but first of all, uh, today's game was uh, the South African game and it was the greens versus the golds i believe is it yeah we can't really call it green and gold it was such a pathetic game to be <laughs> quite honest uh, uh, you, watched, I, uh, you did a live stream didn't you on your youtube channel i did i did and to be honest if 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 i didn't do the live stream i would have stopped watching the game that's how terrible it was all right i saw <laughs> the final result wasn't it like 25 9 or something like that yeah, twenty-five nine to to the green. Yeah, and uh, some of the, one of the other things I saw as well, there was like a controversial yellow card leading up to a try. Well, it, it wasn't it wasn't really that controversial, you know. Um, they just took forever to make the decision because I think I called it like into the first replay. I called yellow card and penalty try, and they they took like five minutes to to just judge on that, and eventually they got it right. So. Oh, okay. Because when I watched it, I thought it was a bit of uh, over-exaggeration. Like, I know there was pulling and shoving, but it's a contact sport. You know, and that's going to happen. I can understand if you probably pulled him back, but it was just like a pull on the arm. So, I, I don't know. I don't think it was that, that uh, how would you say it? it, didn't make that much of an impact, I don't think. Well, go and watch the highlights again, Andrew, because <laughs> basically what happened there is Damien Willems had pulled back Bentley. Um, and he was already on speed, so just that little bit of push back prevented him from from going straight through, because he actually lost his balance in on his way leading up to the try. But okay. I think it was a fair call in the end. Oh, okay, fair enough. Right, so let's just jump straight into it then with Pro 16. Uh, your thoughts on it? Because I think a couple of days ago, it's basically like 90% confirmed now. The South African clubs will join. Uh, so how do you feel about that as a South African yourself? I'm quite happy with it, you know. Um, I just very, I feel very bad for the cheaters because they're the team that's losing out on the end, and they've invested so much money. They, they've got the sponsors. I think it's something like 50 million that uh, all of the the sponsorships together um, put in or invested into the cheaters. So yeah, yeah, got nowhere to go now. But for for the other four franchises, I'm very happy that they're going north. Um, I think it's time to show that New Zealand arrogancy, uh, well, a little bit of, bit of a middle finger. <laughs> so in terms then of uh, Super Rugby, what do you think the next step for them is going to be then? Because like, I would say my opinion, but I don't really watch Super Rugby that much, so I don't feel like I'm that valid when it comes to that. So uh, yeah, what would you say is the next step for them? Is that now for New Zealand or yeah, in Super Australia? Rugby, Super Rugby in general for those sides that will be left in it. What do you think? Yeah, do you okay. be New Zealand and Australia competition and uh, the Jaguars will go as well? Or what do you think? Yeah, no, I think the Jaguars are already out. Eh? Um, I know New Zealand are going to do another Super Rugby Aotearoa next year. It's already been confirmed. Oh, okay. um, it was just a matter of who's going to be part of it now. I know the Western Force have joined them for, for Super Rugby Aotearoa. I know Canola was it, well, no, it was that new MLR team that Hawaii. wanted to be, yeah, Hawaii yeah, that Can wanted Canaloa to be part. or something, yeah. Canaloa, yeah, and they got rejected, I think, yesterday. So oh, they, okay. there's quite a, quite a big, big thing made of it. But personally, I don't think uh, a MLR team would have been really good competing in such a competition at such a high quality quality of rugby anyway yeah it surprised yeah. me that the western fours actually managed to get there yeah i was gonna say it would be quite a cool experience to see though wouldn't it because obviously they were rejected from the major league rugby because it was a finance i think it was uh or it was something along that due to covid anyway and they'll reconsider it in a few years time or something but it would have been a good stepping stone for them to give them that sort of like step up when it comes to the major league rugby to have experience yeah but i think they would have got hammered week in and week <laughs> out it's yeah. almost like the sun wolves um, in super rugby they they had one one 
average season where they managed to beat a couple of good teams, but for the most part, they got hammered every single weekend. And a lot of people didn't even show up to watch the game anymore on television and at the stadium. So I can uh, imagine they're going to the same approach yeah. with, uh, with Hawaii then. So Pro 16, uh, let's say we have the Ospreys versus your team, the Sharks. How's that, how's that going to go, do you think? Well, I'm not so sure that it's going to be too much of a, of a challenge, you know. <laughs> um, Ospreys all the way. <laughs> no. You know, the first thing that came to my mind, um, Ospreys aside, I, I thought to myself, finally, Leinster's not going to win another title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very true. They literally dominate everything. I mean, yeah. uh, I, mean I watched the Dragons versus Leinster last night. Uh, this would be uploaded on the Sunday, so that would have been two nights ago. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I mean, they had a few standout players, the Dragons did, but Leinster, mm. again, just dominating. You know, it's just, it seems to be Irish dominance in this whole league. Yeah, and that's that's where, where the Sharks and the Bulls and the Stormers, I wouldn't say the Lions so much because I still personally feel that the, the Lions and the Cheetahs should merge. They did it by way back in 2000, I think 1999 as well. They, they became the, the Cats and they did pretty well. Um, in, in one year, I think they reached the semi-finals against the Sharks and lost. And I think that would be the right approach if, we, if it does come down to this. If the Cheetahs are going to court and they maybe win that court battle, I think that's maybe the next step that they need to take. Yeah. Okay. And uh, another thing I was going to say then, do you think the current format should stay? So currently we've got two conferences uh, and the South African teams are usually... I think there's one in each conference, from what I remember when I last checked. Uh, so do you think it should stay like that? So you'd have two South African teams in a conference and two in the other? Or do you think it should be like what Super Rugby does and have all the South African teams in one conference? Well, we don't have it that way in the Super Rugby anymore. And I think that was the death of it, you know. Um, the conference system is... It's just crazy to me. Um, I've, I'm one of those guys that believe you need to have strength versus strength every weekend. Yeah. And when you've got conferences, you miss certain teams. So, for instance, with, with Super Rugby, there was years that teams would qualify for the semi-final and they didn't play the Crusaders, you know. So, yeah, yeah it just uh, it was a really screwed up uh, conference system, the Super Rugby, and basically the death of it. So. I would recommend, well, I don't know, my, my opinion doesn't really count, but I would recommend they go back to, to a strength versus strength uh, situation yeah. and go away with the conference system. So you want to see a full table then, do you, where the South African squads will play everybody? I mean, you'll have a lot of games. That's 16 teams then. That's, what, uh, 30 games a season? Yeah, it will probably not be um, be able to do that because I think we had it last with Super Rugby with the, with the Super 14, I think. And it didn't go too bad, but I mean, obviously 16 teams are two teams more and, it, and it's obviously plenty more games. So yeah. I think they'll probably stick with the conference one, but I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I just feel you, you won't be playing against the best every weekend. Yeah. No, that's fair enough, yeah. Uh, I mean, in terms of sides, then, you think you're going to be everybody? You think the Sharks will be everyone there, do you? Well, not the way they played last weekend against the Bulls. Um, <laughs> but I think, look, there, there will come a time when the South African dominance will start to show. And I was quite surprised that the Cheetahs never managed to dominate um, Pro 14 because they played a pretty good game in South Africa, but they like they a little like the French, you know, one week great, the next weekend really crap. Yeah. So I would say if we've got a, a good team like the Sharks um, or the Stormers or the Bulls that plays averagely good every weekend, they could challenge Leinster and Ulster and Munster for, for that title. And I think they could become the dominant force in that competition. Oh, okay. Fair enough. And then uh, other things then, or I thought we'd talk about, would be the, the lower nations like the Dragons, and we've also got Zebra as well, arguably. Uh, obviously, most of the time they are losing, 
uh, in all due respect to the squad. They have decent players, but it just doesn't seem to be working. Uh, what would you say then from a South African point of view, what would you want to see happen of them? If we would introduce other teams, would you want to see them go or do you think they should stay and that's where they should be? What do you think? I think, I think the Italians is going to hate me eventually as time <laughs> goes on because, yeah, Zebra and, and what's the other one? Um, Benetton. Benetton. Look, Benetton's not that bad actually. No. Um, but if you if you really take it, it, it's more or less the same with Italy in the Six Nations. Um, they just, you know, they're going to get beaten every single weekend when they play. And once in a blue moon, you get a result that go their way. But for the most part, they're just, just excessive, you know. Yeah. Um, so I would probably want to see the Cheetahs take one of these places. Um, but then we're going to get to a point where, where the South African teams are going to dominate Europe. Yeah. In, in, in teams and not so much in results but yeah I would probably replace the Cheetahs with Zebra and then I don't know maybe maybe another team from from uh, Ireland or Wales to, to compete as well yeah so I know it wouldn't happen but who would you want to see because I would quite like the idea of having a Georgian club there personally yeah Georgian rugby has improved quite a bit I think they did new Italy if you consider way back, Italy came became a tier one nation. I yeah. don't think Georgia is too far off from becoming a tier one nation. I would actually go so far and say Italy should go back to a tier two nation. Okay. Um, but yeah, a Georgian, a Georgian <laughs> team would be quite nice. Um, yeah. If you could add that. There's only, what, like two Scottish teams in the Pro 14 as well? Yeah. So maybe add another Scottish team because... I do believe that Scotland rugby is going to get a lot better in the next couple of years. Oh, okay, fair enough. Because there was talks, well, no, it wasn't talks. It was uh, about 10, 15 years ago, I think. Uh, there was actually another Scottish team as well, but I think they got rid of them. I'm pretty sure oh. there was. Same as there was a fifth Wales team as well. It was called, uh, I cannot remember the name, but it was uh, basically located between... Uh, Ospreys and Cardiff Blues area, so between those two, and oh. uh, they only played one season. They had the likes of Gareth Thomas, uh, Alan Wynne Jones, and so on. They won the season in the first year, and then they got rid of them. Why? <laughs> I, I don't know. Doesn't, doesn't I think make it was, sense. I think it was down to it was rivalry. I think because they played in two stadiums. From mm. what I read about it, anyway, they played in two stadiums, and those two teams locally are massive rivals. It'd be like having Cardiff and Swansea more merging, you know? Uh, okay. uh, and that's one of the things that came down to it. And then they just couldn't afford to do it or something, so they just got rid of them. Yeah, it's it's like the Blue Bulls and, and the Lions will never be able to merge, but they're like 60 kilometers from each other. Yeah. So, yeah. So it, yeah. Was, it, it was that sort of thing, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, the Cheetahs, obviously, uh, will be gone out of the Pro 16 now. And we both think that's uh, quite unfair to see that. What about the Kings? Kings, I think, are in administration now, are they? Yeah, I'm probably going to say something that's not very popular here with, with certain people in South Africa, but the Kings for me is a politically motivated team. Um, they basically got created because of politics and, and certain transformation, things that needed to be met. Oh, and, yeah. and you can clearly see that the Kings have not made that jump up. I think they've lost almost every single game in the Pro 14. Um, they got hammered when they were in Super Rugby. They got hammered in our local competition. So at the end of the day, it's it's one of those teams that never deserved to be in any of the competitions, to be quite oh, honest. Okay. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. I didn't actually know that. So uh, in terms of Super Rugby again then, uh, and I think we'll finish it there. Uh, the Jaguars probably going back to SLAR then with uh, the other team, K-Boss, I think it is, isn't it? Yeah. No, I think uh, they'll probably go back there. And, and it's a pity because most of these guys are going to go and play in Europe again. Yeah. Um, we've seen it in the past that most of the players were coming from the French competitions. Um, you'll probably now get a lot more going to, to the English Premier League as well. They're all chasing money. And it's a pity because we see it here in South Africa Again, with the showdown today, it was it was 50 of our local best players yeah. and the quality was absolutely crap. 
So you you do the same with with, with Argentina and you play the locals. You play the SLA, yeah, the SLAR, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And it's not the same quality as what you would have had in Super Rugby or the top 14 or the English Premier League. So yeah. they'll probably all end up leaving again and they won't have any local players to play for the Jaguars and yeah. they'll probably use amateur players again for that. Yeah. No, it is a shame to see. I mean, if we have any uh, Kings or Cheetahs fans watching, uh, let me know in the comment section what you think. Uh, it will be sad to see you leave the Pro 14, uh, but it is what it is. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Please make sure you go and smash like button download show your support check out Johan's channel the link will be in the description and uh yeah make sure you go and subscribe as well for more videos guys thanks so much for watching i've been andrew he's been Johan. we'll see you in another video peace out guys cheers guys i can feel it somewhere inside haunting like a drug I keep on wanting There's a love that fits so perfect it's hard to believe There's a reason I can feel my heart stop beating And the air gets tough just breathing I'm alone but I'm still feeling like someone's with me It's strange